Hello, I'm Bradley and welcome to my channel. First things first, if you're new here, please subscribe. You don't have to, of course, but it really help me out in where I'm trying to get my channel to be. So I have had hearing problems for, I would say, about 14, maybe 15 years, maybe a little bit longer. Um, I've had decline of my hearing and alongside that, I have had um, all sorts of different hearing aids, and I've captured this on my channel quite a few times, but I haven't done a hearing review or a hearing kind of catch up or touch point on where I am at the moment with my hearing loss, where I am at the moment with my hearing aids, um, and I've never talked about balance. I've talked about my health quite a bit on my channel because I've been through quite a lot in recent years through having my groin reconstructed, hernia repairs, all stem from having the incorrect mesh used. Um, I'll be very open with you. Um, I'm having problems currently, which was from my original surgery in 2017, problems with overactive bladder, so I have a lot of bladder difficulties. As a young man, that's really, really difficult. Um, I also lost my nan last year, who is my world, and that really that really sent my life spiralling in a completely very strange and dark area which I struggle with on a on a daily basis to be honest with you there are times where I think I can handle it and there are times when I just can't um, and thankfully I'm blessed in this life to have an incredible mum which that was her mum and um, I'm incredibly blessed to have my my dad and my wonderful family which I have. Hearing loss for me has been a huge thing all throughout my uh, teenage years, my later teenage years, my 20s and I'm now 29 I've had a lot of problems with my hearing. Um, it all started, and I say 15 years, which would take me to being 14, so I think I was a little bit early on that, so it's probably 16 years where I've had hearing problems. Because um, it was just before I hit my teenage years. And yeah, so where am I now? Um, so I I wear a cross system. I wear a cross system. So I'm deaf in my left ear. Okay, so this is my cross aid, which I have here. And the hearing comes from this side here. So this is the hearing um, aid, which listens for me for what I describe as my good ear. And then the sound comes from my good ear over into my deaf ear because I don't hear anything anything from this side. Um, whether or not I hear things, and, uh, if it's incredibly loud, to be honest with you, I'm not too sure anymore, but I certainly don't hear speech or anything from my left ear. Um, so let's just put these back in. A cross system, um, I used to have a cross system which used to have a wire at the back of my neck, was in, it was fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Um, and then I changed to a different type of hearing aid, and that was really difficult for me. Um, I'm also allergic to latex, so I had a lot of problems with getting the moulds and things right. Um, and I battled with them for about six months, and then eventually I got comfortable with them. I had them for a while, and then, I don't know how long I've had these hearing aids for now. It must be getting on nearly nine months to a year, I would have thought. Um, maybe even more. Who knows? Time flies, doesn't it, when you're having fun. <laughs> Got to be positive in this life, haven't you? Otherwise, what else would you do? Sit here and cry. So, um, yeah, so these are fantastic. Great. They really are great. Um, but, of course, in line with having hearing problems and hearing difficulties, it affects us on a daily basis, but it doesn't just, it doesn't stop there, I'm afraid, with me. It also um, gives me a lot of problems with my balance. So, for example, um, I can lose my footing quite easily. I can, I can um, trip over quite a bit. I can fall over, probably a little bit more than what a normal person does. Um, I say that, and I shouldn't be hard on myself like that, than what and what a person does who has normal hearing. It is down to my hearing. My balance is quite bad at times. Other times it doesn't bother me. It certainly doesn't define me. That's one thing I want to put across here. It will never stop me from doing anything. Um, I have an amazing support network with my family. My nan, bless her heart, was absolutely amazing. Um, we both have tinnitus. My nan had, used to have tinnitus. I have tinnitus, which if you've never never heard of it, it's like a high pitch, sometimes a ringing sound, sometimes a rushing water sound. Um, and I get that in both of my ears, even in my deaf side, believe it or not, um, and then towards the middle of my head. And I get that quite often when I'm feeling down, when I'm feeling quite stressed, I get that. Um, but on top of the balance issues, I think that's what really um, 
brought this up into the forefront of my mind because yesterday I had balanced testing. And this is a bit of a shock and um, not the testing, the results. Um, and I'm still trying to digest this. So my hearing has progressively got worse on my left side and has left me, to be honest with you, with no useful sound at all on my left side. Um, and they've always thought that that was many ears disease, but they've never ever been able to pinpoint it because there is no one categoric test which will say yes. It's almost like a collection of symptoms, a collection of investigative tests and um, every route kind of exhausted before you get to this. In many ears, um, typically, I believe, is where you have real violent attacks of nausea, vertigo, um, very similar to labyrinthitis, which is severe vertigo, severe sickness to the point where it holds you and you have to get to the floor because it's spinning so much. And my mum, bless her heart, suffers with that badly. Um, and I've had episodes of it as well. So is my twin brother and so is my eldest brother as well. And then my next brother down. So who knows it runs in the family, but we've had a lot of it in our family. Um, but stress is the main culprit. I know when my mum lost her sister, my aunt, my auntie Kim, um, which is my nan's daughter as well. Um, she went through a horrific time after we, we um, lost my aunt. My mum went through a horrific time with labyrinthitis. And then when she lost her brother six months later, um, it came on again. So it is certainly simulated by stress. For me, slightly different many years to see. So it's, it burns out apparently eventually and then you're left with whatever it's done. Um, and it's an inner ear disorder, I believe. And um, that's why, because it's took my hearing in my left side. I don't necessarily know if I've got that, if I've had that, but I do have episodes of having a lot of vertigo, a lot of nausea at times. Um, very randomly, I can wake up and I can have um, nausea, sickness, uh, vertigo, where the room just spins. Um, it affects my balance sometimes. And sometimes I can just get that every month. I can get that, say, a couple of times in a week, or I can go four, five, six months without it happening at all. Um, but it's not very nice. So I'm under the consultant at my local hospital, and um, I've been having uh, tests, consultations, of just trying to get a hold of... Um, progression of what my hearing loss was, how it happened. I'm also under a geneticist of working with them, all different tests. It's been going on for nearly two years now um, of trying to find out why it happened, because ultimately I want to have knowledge in a way of knowing or to be prepared. I think knowledge is key, isn't it? And I would like to be prepared if it's going to progress, if it's going to deteriorate further, and um, what can happen. I have a bone anchored hearing aid assessment on hold for me at the moment. Um, I even have um, discussions with a consultant about single-sided cochlear implant, um, as I know that that's taking off in parts of the world, in America and Australia. Um, and I'm fortunate that my consultant has been in those parts of the world to be have it, that exposure. Um, so Rin talks of all these things, but at the moment, I'm working on staying as healthy as possible. I take vitamins every single day. I've tried many, many things um, to try to keep my hearing as healthy as possible. Um, some work, most don't, but I take, I take vitamins every single day to try and stay as healthy as possible, to try and keep as much hearing as strong, as sharp as anything for, yeah, hopefully forever. So, um, I'm a true believer in that this is not going to define me. It doesn't make me me. I have down days about it. Of course I do. But it is part of me. But it's only part. Um, it's like my mum, bless her heart, always says to me, um, it doesn't change the incredible person you are. So I always hold on to that. My nan was incredible as well. Um, of all those, those heartfelt messages of love to get you through. Um, so I've been really, really blessed with my family. I have been in this life. But anyway, so I had the balance testing yesterday. And to be honest, I think I kind of already knew the results, but hearing hearing it, um, being diagnosed with a severe balance dysfunction on my deaf side. Um, and what happens basically is you go into a room and I had this really lovely nurse. And first of all, in each eardrum, they check the pressure if the eardrum is functioning well, I believe. So it's almost like, it looks like a pen, like a thick pen it goes inside your ear and it creates sort of like impulses, vibrations to check if the eardrum is moving. And it's like an air shoot in your ear. And then your reaction gives them basically 
how well your eardrum is functioning, I believe. Forgive me if that's not completely correct. Um, so anyway, that was done in both my ears, and I think that went well. Then, at 44 degrees, you have water put in your ear, rotating in your ear, um, and you're led back on a bed, and then the nurse holds a bowl under your ear, and she is then um, stimulating your ear with the water. And then afterwards, you have, and whilst all this is going on, by the way, you have a frame over your face with goggles, and this apparatus so then the nurse can measure what's happening with your eyes the what's happening with, with your eyes for the dizziness so to speak so in a way you're evoking that element of vertigo so after the warm water has been rushing around in your ear and it's drained out um and then your eyes are covered up with something over your face and then the lights go out and you're in the dark and you keep your eyes wide open and there's a red light and you just have to keep your eyes open and then your eyes spin like crazy well they did for this side anyway um, which is my good ear remembering, um, and that was that was pretty bad, pretty bad to be honest with you. It was almost like you were on um, a roundabout or some sort of carousel, that type of thing, spinning and spinning. And I thought it was going to fall off the bed. It made me feel really, really sick for a little while, um, and I've been feeling really, really groggy today. I done a clip actually earlier, um, and I was just smiling, grinning through it, just trying to get through it because I wanted to do it. Um, I'm a true believer in it; would never stop me from doing anything. But I felt pretty groggy, pretty rough at times today, quite sick at times especially if I've moved or bent round um, to pick something up or anything like that at all. Um, I've managed to do my work today as well. So I work from home on certain days, and some days I go into the office. But yeah, it's been quite bad for that. But when they've done the other ear, so stimulating the ear with the water at 44 degrees, having my eyes up, turned the light out, nothing. Nothing happened at all, which in a way made me feel automatically really, really worried, really concerned what was going on. Nothing. Didn't stimulate anything. Of course, um, it did get me worried. It really did get me worried to think that I'm at this age and it wasn't enough that just my hearing has gone on that side, but also the balance function has gone. And that's why I trip over quite a bit, lose my footing quite a bit, lose my balance quite a bit. Um, I've even had people mistake me for having too much to drink. Yeah, that was um, in one of my first jobs. I was walking along the road and um, I kept going off to one side and, and somebody thought that. Yeah, I know. Awful. Um, and then after the 44 degree watering it here and the balance testing, then you have the cold. It's 33, I believe, um, which again, similar, but um, the coldness almost would shriek you into that little bit more of that vertigo sort of feeling. So on this side of my good side, where I've obviously got the balance there and the hearing, I have got a hearing loss on this side, um, hence the two hearing aids. Um, well, not really actually, because this one acts as an, almost like I say an aerial or satellite for my deaf ear, um, but I've also now got it helping to boost this ear a little bit as well, because I've got some change there in recent years, but not gonna worry about it, why? And um, I have my down days, of course, but anyway, the cool water, but again, didn't stimulate anything on my deaf side. Then the nurse sat me down, explained through everything, and um, it highlighted quite clearly that there was um, the loss of the balance function. So she's now writing back to the consultant, um, and then to hopefully manage it, to look at it. Um, and to keep an eye on it and to, re to review any change possibly. It's also really important, she said, um, to stay socially active, to stay active, just because of the, the reduced stimulation to that side of my auditory system and that part of my brain, um, which is a worry, of course, because it's linked to all sorts of things, all those type of um, disorders and things which we can read about, which does frighten me a little bit sometimes, but I wear my hearing aids to keep my um, auditory system stimulated on that side of course to keep the brain stimulated with um, sound and speech and I'm outgoing and I love to socialize and I'm active I'm always doing exercises and things so I do the most I can to stay as healthy as I can um, yeah it's pretty rubbish at times it's pretty deflating at times but um, as I said it's not gonna define me it's not gonna ruin my life it's not going to stop me from doing what i want to do sometimes like for example this evening i had to go and collect um i went with my parents to the store to collect um my prescriptions and medications um and the person who was taking my prescription um had a mask on of course because of the covid situation some people are now some people aren't 
Um, and I didn't have one on. And he did. And um, the person who was sewing me. And he went. And my parents weren't with me at the time. Because if they would have been. I know there would have been a bit of a rumpus caused. But um, he said something to me. And I didn't hear. And I said, I'm ever so sorry. I said, I didn't hear what you said. And he said it again. And I still didn't hear. And I said, I'm ever so sorry. I said, I've, I've got a problem with my hearing. Um, and you know, it was almost like somebody flicked a switch. And he spoke to me as I was absolutely stupid. It was almost like that you... I don't know what it was, like I was, yeah, I don't, that made me feel weird, that really made me feel weird, all of a sudden speaking to me, and it was mouthing, I mean, confirming my name, are oh, you, and I was, and of course the mask was on, but I could see he was obviously doing more, more sort of emotions like this, and his eyes as well, and it was really loud, and, every, and the other people in the queue, looked and i thought how belittling but you know that's not the first time that happens often that happens often i remember actually a couple of months back in, in the supermarket and i thought my mum was going to throw this stuff at her but she she didn't my mum's a very very glamorous lady very 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 calm very very controlled very um all, all that is absolutely amazing with people very customer focused always have roles in in sort of that area in the food industry so she's always always been very very um how would you put it very very telephone voice i would probably come across as my mum's always been um speaks very correctly um very in my house growing up you had to speak correctly otherwise that just wasn't going, just wasn't happening. Mum and dad were very much like that all the time and still are. And anyway, um, I didn't hear, I was paying for my things first of all, and I didn't hear what she said. I think it was about the th second, third time maybe, and she snapped a little bit, this woman. Of course, my mum was behind me, and let's just put it this way, it went crashing down. And um, yeah, so it's not the first time it's happened about my hearing. Um, yeah, I can name lots of times, really, which is pretty sad. It really is. So, um, I hate to, I hate, I hate anybody, I would, uh, anybody to go through that. But it happens all the time, doesn't it? That's just the thing. It really does happen all the time. I um, mean, it shouldn't do. People should, people should always think, shouldn't they, before, um, before you open your mouth, shouldn't you, really? But, um, yeah, so that's me, anyway. I don't want to go on any more, but if anybody would like to ask um, any questions about my hearing problems, Please feel free to about balance problems in one thing and another. Um, last thing I think I just want to finish up on is, um, do I take any medications, of course? Well, yes, I do. So I've explored several medications for my balance and hearing problems. Um, so Stematol being one of them, which I tried many, many years ago, which actually made my symptoms worse and made me have other horrible side effects. So Stematol I don't take. Um, and then now I change between a medication called beta histine, um, which I believe is called shortened for CERC. And I also, which I'm on right now is Cinarazine, which, um, I take, which helps, um, sort of reduce the effects of the balance system. So rather than the vertigo making me feel as though everything's spinning, it, it tries to um, excel the blood flow, I believe, in your auditory system and calm those effects down. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, I've been back and forth on those medications for many, many years now. They are helpful at times, and as I say, other times they don't really help at all. Um, but yeah, so that's me on the medication front there. So if anybody wants to ask any questions about that, please do so. You know I wear hearing aids. I've explored with many different types of hearing aids. So if that's something what concerns you or you want to chat about that, please leave me a comment down below. Or if you want to ask me a question about medications or how it makes me feel, happy to answer all of those things as well. Um, I'm very, very open with my channel. My channel, I am very... I will always be open, honest. Integrity is everything to me. Um, so... There will be. And if there's a question where I think, actually, I don't want to ask that, I will just come back and say to you, I'm not feeling that I can answer this right now, but I will make sure that I go into it and I will absolutely answer. But there is not really a subject which is off limits, to be quite honest with you, um, in regards to all this hearing, balance, medication, one thing or another. Um, so, yeah, I've lived this life with this problem for quite a long time now. So it's me. So I'm, I'm very, very happy to talk about it. If I can help other people with it, then amazing. I'd love to do that. So please feel free to. Um, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So on that note, thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much for sharing this clip with me. Um, 
look after your hearing. God bless you, and I will see you real soon. Bye for now.